What's up, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave. Good to be back. Uh, thank you for all the birthday shout outs for everyone that like hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I was in Dubai for, for a week. Uh, came back, been jet lagged for a few days. You know, just couldn't really get into the uh, boxing content thing since I've been home. But I'm back, you know, and I, I got some content prepared. And we're getting close to uh, Spence and Crawford. We're also getting close to, in a way, and Fulton. All right. So those breakdowns, full breakdowns will be out. Um, and plus, I have other content on the way. A lot of lightweight division talk and a lot of heavyweight division talk as well. So uh, be on the lookout for those. All right. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things when, you know, we're leading up to this fight. And, you know, a lot of these points are going to be brought up in an actual breakdown. And I do the final breakdown that I'm going to do on this fight. You know, just some, a few misconceptions or maybe not misconceptions, but a few things that I disagree with that I constantly hear about this fight that I've heard about. And some of this is new things. Some of these are old things. Some people are still bringing up the same things that, you know, are not even necessarily true. You know, I mean, some things are being brought up that don't even matter anymore, being that the fight is signed, is sealed, is scheduled, is coming up. It's just, I'm I'm kind of tired of seeing it. You know what I mean? I know people are going to have their picks and that's fine. You know, I know that. There are people that's going to go hard for Spence. Some people just simply think Spence is going to win. But there's other people that are just pro Spence because they're they're part of a whole group that is probably pro PBC or anti top ring, anti match room, and vice versa. Same thing with Bud. Um, some people are just picking a side simply off the 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 old the whole group you know what i mean and you know if you like spence you must like frank martin you know if you like bud you must like Keyshawn davis it's that kind of thing you know what i mean you like everything over there and you support everything over there and you smashed or s shut down everything you know you know what i mean i've been hearing a lot about that and i have to talk about that when it comes to the lightweight division as well um, but just so you know, I am picking simply off the two fighters and I've always done that. All right. Um, I don't have no connections to any of these guys. You know what I mean? We all have our favorites and our biases and stuff, but I'm calling it as I see it and nothing more. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a few things that I've heard leading up to this fight where I just, I just wanted to point out uh, the one thing I want to start out with uh, the whole bud is too small thing. All right. Now, we know Crawford is smaller than Spence, right? Crawford is naturally a smaller guy. He's still a smaller guy. With that being said, Crawford is a welterweight. He belongs there. He's not a big welterweight. But he fits the division. There's guys that's smaller than him there. There's guys that's been way more successful than him there that are smaller than him in previous generations. He belongs at the weight. All right. Um, he's a physically strong guy. He's a puncher. Uh, he belongs at the weight. So when we say he's too small, you're you're taking away if. Spence is the wit to win this fight. You're taking away from what he actually does in the ring. He doesn't just beat guys because of his size. I'm not saying that his size don't have anything to do with it. But his 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 gas tank, his conditioning, his stamina for him to fight at a high level for a 12 round straight, you know, barely taking breaks in between the the volume and the the, the pressure that he puts on. You have to get credit, even with the people that say that he drinks too much or he, he doesn't, he's not fit all year round. He gets fat in between fights. There are the fact that he can still show up and fight at that level says a lot about him. 
You know what I mean? Him in general, this this is the kind of fighter he is. Uh, yes, he has size at the division. Okay, he does have size, and size does matter. Size matter when Jared Hurd had his success at 154. You know, before he moved up to 160, he was a big guy at 154, and he was taking guys out in a very similar fashion before, you know, after, you know, after, up until Lara. After the Lara fight, you know, I think that Lara fight took a lot out of him, you know, and never was really the same fighter after that. Um, but leading up to that fight, he was taking guys out. And it was because, not because he was the most gifted fighter, but it was because he was big, he was strong, he put a lot of pressure on, you know. All of those things matter. But saying that Bud is too small, it's more like Bud has been fighting all of these guys that have been bigger than him. You know what I mean? Um, not only that, but Bud is not a small guy at the division. There are smaller guys. Spence was going to fight Benny Pacquiao. Floyd was smaller. Adrian Broner was smaller. This is just countless fighters that we can name that are smaller than Terrence Bud Crawford that fought at an, an elite level. You know what I mean? Um, Mikey Garcia for Errol Spence went the distance. When, regardless of if it was a shutout or not, he went the distance. And he took a lot of punishment from Errol Spence and went the distance with him. Okay? Um, Bud, to this point, has shown pretty good durability. Yes, he's been hurt uh, a couple of times here and there. Yeah, he's been stunned and, and hit with a good shot. So has Errol. But he's been shown to be a pretty durable fighter. And this is a fighter that has uh, that, that, that is in the gym on the off season. You know, when he's not in actual camp, he stays in the gym. So when people say he's too small, uh, that's not going to be the reason, the simple reason on why Spence wins the fight. It's because all of the other things included the full package of Errol Spence. I was watching the season, the episode two of the All Access earlier this morning, and I was listening to Derek James, and I was listening to Errol, and I was listening to even Anthony Joshua they had on there, and they're aware of the the ability of Terrence Crawford. Of course they are. Derek James says, listen, I'm watching him. He's watching him and he's like, this guy, he, he got a phenomenal, you know, great ability. He's very agile. He's a very good boxer. But we're trying to break him. Like how much you have in you. It's not about out boxing and schooling Terrence Crawford. They're not going in there. They're they're publicly saying it. They're not going in there to just out box him they're gonna be like how much can you take how bad do you want it and that is what errol spence's specialty is is to impose his will the volume the the fact that he's extremely durable you know what i mean the countless power you know the punching the, the it's really the volume you know the condition and how much can you take it's errol has never been a one punch knockout artist he stops guys basically just beating on them. But he hasn't stopped everyone he's fought. You know, he's beating them up pretty badly. I said that Danny Garcia was going to lose to Errol. And he was going to lose to him clear. Better than, you know, Errol was going to beat him better than anybody. Even coming off of the car accident. I said, I predicted Errol was going to have the best performance against Danny Garcia up to this point. And he did. And... But he didn't stop him. Same thing with Sean Porter. Debatable split decision win. You know, so we got to be mindful of what we say here. Arrow is a beast. And Arrow does stop fighters. All right. But Terrence Crawford, there are certain things that's unique about him where he's not going to just be standing right in front of Arrow Spence like Ugas did. I was watching some of the Ugas fight just now. And you see in the third round, Spence turns it up. He starts to turn it up. And Ugas starts trading with him because he wants to stand his ground. He doesn't want to be bullied. But now you're playing into Errol's way of fighting. And you might have some success for a few rounds, which he did. And I'm talking about Ugas. 
But when it gets late and you're starting to slow down and Arrow's still turning up, that's where you lose. And if Bud chooses to fight that way, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Bud is planning to do, but I know if Bud tries to beat Spence at his own game, then he's more likely to lose the fight, in my opinion. I don't know. He might go in there and shock the world and beat. I'm not expecting that, though. But you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I mean. Like, these guys, like Ugas, who just stood there and started trading, not moving. You know, Ugas is very flat-footed, very slow. You know what I mean? Good counterpuncher. But he stood there and started banging with spins going about. Ugas is not a power puncher. He's just not. You know, he's not a fighter that's just stopping guys left and right. But stopped all welterweights that he's fought. All of them. You know? So, um, the butt is too small thing is just saying he's too small. He's smaller. But saying that he's too small for Spence is like you're taking away from what Errol's capabilities by saying that because it's, it's, it's more than just size when it comes to this fight. You know what I mean? Um, the things that, another thing that people keep bringing up is the resumes and, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's definitely an important thing. I do all the time. I bring it up. But when people say who did, like Bud fight because we hear it more from Bud being that he wasn't at, as a welterweight as long when people say who did he fight right who did he fight he fought Sean Porter when it was too late or he felt Krell Brook when it was too late you know Jeff Warren's nobody all of this stuff you guys are the the, the, the thing is this fight is happening in less than two weeks they're gonna fight each other soon so when you say who did, you know, this guy fight or this guy fight, well, no matter how you feel about the fight and how which direction is going to go, there's no one on Errol Spence's resume that's nearly as good as Terrence Bud Crawford. He'll tell you that himself. And same thing with Bud Crawford. He's saying the same thing about Arrow. All of these interviews that they're doing, there's nothing but mutual respect. I mean, I've heard Arrow say that he had, I've heard Arrow in an interview say that Bud Crawford several fights ago was in his top five pound for pound. You know what I mean? Like, you fans don't have to respect Bud, but if anybody respects Bud, it's Arrow and his camp. There's no one that is on Errol Spence's resume that's as talented as Bud Crawford or as decorated as Bud Crawford. The same with Bud Crawford. There's there's no one on Crawford's resume that's as good as Errol Spence. No one. Period. Period. So when people keep going with this resume thing, like, who did this guy fight? Who did this guy fight? I'm hearing less about the styles and, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of the fighters in the ring. And I'm hearing more about, well, who looked better or who fought a fighter at a better time? We have to take those things into account. Yes. But I don't hear enough about what the fighters need to do in order to win the fight. Based on what they do in the ring, I don't hear enough of that. I don't read enough of it. I don't see people tweeting enough of that. All I hear is, oh, Spence or Bud fought Crawford or Sean Porter when he was done. Or Kenny should have never drew in the towel. You know, that's their, their, that's their argument. You know what I mean? Bud Crawford is... You know, he fought a bunch of bums at 135 and 140, you know. All right. But Bud Crawford is still better than anyone. It's Spence, Spence who wins this fight. Whoever wins this fight is going to be pound for pound number one. Some people, most people we've ever have 
even Spence said that Crawford is is pound for pound. What do you fans, you fans are saying this guy is this, he's not good enough for this, that. Spence is fighting that man that has more respect for him than you fans do. Same thing with Bud and Spence. Another thing is when it comes to resumes and who fought who, you know, oh, I forgot the part with Sean Porter, you know, and, and Kel Brook as well. You know, this whole Sean Porter, Kel Brook thing, since they're common opponents, right? Kel Brook fought Spence at a better time, in my opinion, right? He fought him at a better time, right? Because it was years ago, right? It was about, I don't know, three, four years earlier. Um, Kel, you know, lost and took a few fights, but didn't have a really tough fight since he lost to Spence, right? But Spence got, you know, Kel Brook got demolished by Triple G right before that, you know, at 160, had to come right back down. So he might have been damaged goods in that fight. Well, obviously he was because of the injury. Not taking anything away from Spence because that was a great win. That's one of his best wins, period. To this day, I, it's probably my personal favorite win. Um, But if you're going to use that logic about who fought who and how Bud fought him too late, Kell Brook wasn't at his best when Spence fought him neither. And the thing with Sean Porter, you know, Sean Porter already had lost a couple times. All right? Uh, lost better than Kell Brook, in my opinion. Um, but you guys are forgetting, you know, no one brings this up enough. Your Dennis Ugas had a split decision with Sean Porter right before Errol fought him. Very controversial, very close fight. Fight could have easily gone either way. I remember the time of the fight. After the fight with Ugas and Sean Porter, a lot of people felt Sean lost the fight. You know, so for the people that go into this Sean Porter, you know, he didn't have the will to win anymore. You know, I know he made a couple of comments himself, and that's cool. Um, he didn't prepare for it, you know. Sean Porter has been shaky for years. If you've been watching him for years. I saw the first Julio Diaz fight. I don't think he won that fight. It was a draw, but I don't think he won that fight. All right? He didn't beat Kell Brook. I think the Thurman fight was debatable. You know? The Ugas fight was debatable. The Errol Spence fight was debatable. One fight that was not debatable was the Terrence Crawford fight. Now, we can say... Yo, he didn't care anymore, and, and maybe he didn't care as much. Maybe he didn't work and train as hard. But what I saw in the ring, and that's a fact that you can't change what is on that record. And what's on that record is this guy was dropped two times and a towel was thrown in. The fight was over, you know. Um, Sean probably could have continued, but we don't know what, what, what would have happened. You know, Crawford might have knocked him out. Or the fight might have went to a decision. But I think people are basing a lot of that off of just Sean Porter's and Kell Brooks' performances. You can't control that. The guy is not a career welterweight. And that's my another point. You guys are talking about who did more at welterweight when a fighter has been a welterweight his entire career. He's been a welterweight his entire career. He's supposed to have accomplished more. You know what I mean? In fact, this fight should have happened early. If it wasn't for the accident, if it wasn't for the eye injury, you know, these delays, this fight might have happened even earlier. Maybe not. I have no idea what 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 is what. But you guys are talking about a, an actual career welterweight how he did more than the guy that moved up from two other divisions what did he do as a welterweight well he just demolished everyone that they put in front of him everyone that was available there were offers made to fight Danny to fight Keith Thurman these guys didn't bite on the offers they stayed PBC which a lot of fighters over there do 
You know what I mean? They, he didn't have an option to fight any of these other guys. So he beat who he can beat when he beat them. And that's all he could really do. And the last point of that part is the South Pole thing. You guys are, you're talking about size. You're talking about resumes. You're forgetting the fact that neither one of them has great wins over Southpaws. Some of the best fighters that they fought, they both fought are not Southpaws. This is a mystery. This is the big question mark going into this fight. None of, neither one of them has anyone on there. When I go to Terrence Crawford, I, I got to look at... When I do film study, I got to look at the Julius Andango win. I got to look at the Felix Diaz win. That's what I got to look at. That's what I got to work with. We know that Julius Andango and Felix Diaz is now on Errol Spence's level. And when I go to Errol Spence's resume, I got to go all the way down to Leonard Bundle, who was a, a constant switcher, wasn't effective at all. I got to go down to... Who else? This guy, uh, who's the other guy? Keith Van Her Chris Van Heerden. I got to go to that. <coughs> I got to go all the way back to Emmanuel Latte from 10 years ago. That's what I got to work with to find another South Pole. You know, like, there are some mysteries going on here. For you guys that's talking about who beat who better or who beat who first, they're both southpaws. You know, now we know Bud can switch, but we know he's better as a southpaw. He's more natural as a southpaw. So that's a big mystery. Errol Spence, Heerden, Larte, Heerden and Larte, maybe a little bit of bundle. I can't even count bundle. I'm not even going to count. I'm even going to do that. You know? I think Bud fought the better Southpaws and Ndongo and uh, Diaz, but they're not, they're not on Arrow's level. This is what I'm saying. You guys, you got to take all of these into account. It's very difficult to, I mean, I already made my decision. I already know, I already have my pick, but it's very difficult to, to pinpoint exactly how this can go because not only have they not fought a talent as good as the other, but there's no their best fights and best wins are against right, you know, orthodox fighters. They're not against the Southpaws. You know, these two guys got arguably got about seven, eight fighters at least that's that's better than the, the best Southpaw that they fought. You know? Um and and the whole the, you know as far as a fight getting made now, I know we've I've even myself I've made content over the years about why this fight is not happening. You know now that it is happening, um, it's clear to me that the fighters want it. They both want it. Um, I've been a believer that a lot of the politics have played a role on why it didn't happen. Uh, PBC had a stable for Spence. They promoted their fighter and they promoted the other fighters that were with PBC, whether they had a belt or not, over Terrence Crawford, even though Craig Crawford hold the, held the WBL. I think that has a lot to do with it. I don't believe that Heyman and the PBC wanted to make that fight any earlier than than. Spence having all three of the titles. But I believe the fighters themselves, both Spence and Bud, made sacrifices to make this fight happen. If Spence still didn't want the fight, the fight would not be happening. Spence could have taken a tune-up, okay? Um, Spence has not been in the ring since Ugas, all right? Before, it was Bud that needed the tune-up because he hadn't been in the ring since Porter, you know? 
He had the last fight, the most recent fight. Now, Spence is the one that's been out the ring the longest. You know, so both of these guys haven't been extremely active. Spence had eye injury, you know. Um, and I know that has nothing to do with Bud, but still, this guy hasn't been that active in the last few years. He just hasn't. You know, I owe Spence for it. Ugas in 2022 and for Danny in 2020 and then for Sean in 2019. He hasn't been that active. And for him to take the fight now, he's making a sacrifice. If these guys couldn't work it out last year, but they worked it out this year based on phone calls, I mean, if they're both saying it, then that's all we needed to know. And especially with Spence and these cryptic tweaks that he's been saying, you know, leading up to this, us getting this fight or this fight being announced. Spence wants to fight. Bud wants to fight. They both made sacrifices. Bud was over on top rank. He's not there anymore. He left that whole system organization over there while everyone that's in his camp and all of them younger guys are still over there. He left. He left. You know, he's fighting on PBC. And it's weird to me because people are still talking about who should be the A-side and all of that still. Which is crazy because it's like, why do you even care at this point? If we're getting the fight, if we're getting the fight, that means both fighters agreed to some sort of terms. I don't care who is getting what you know like who's getting the most in the purse i don't even want to know the numbers once the fight is announced i don't even care to know that's their business in fact before i was a youtuber before i was even on here i didn't even know i didn't even follow purses for fights i never followed purses for fights when i came on here it became part of boxing talk to talk about the politics and the money. And I didn't talk about any of this stuff. When I in my early days on this channel, I never talked about the persons. You know, but once fights started to not happen and it was because of money, I had to make the news and bring up the news. But when a fight gets made like the way this did, like at the end, where these guys just say, yo, we picked up the phone and we worked it out. I said, well, we need more fighters to do this. Like guys that really want to fight each other. We need to happen. We need this to happen more. Because this promoter beef thing is part of the reason why we're not getting the fights. And everybody's attacking these fighters when it's really not up to them. It's really not up to them. Not all the time. Sometimes it's not. And when these promoters have issues like Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya talking trash back and forth to each other, you guys are not fighting. Why are you so involved as far as like your disdain for each other? Who cares if you guys hate each other? You guys are not fighting. You're supposed to be giving us what we want. And you're supposed to be giving the fighters what they want and what's most lucrative for their career. What you guys feel about each other doesn't matter. Just make the damn fight. So both of these guys had to make sacrifices to get here at this point. And they both need each other, in my opinion. Regardless of what they say, um, they both accomplished great things. Yeah, Spence, you know, a unified champion, you know, picked up three of the belts. You know, Bud, three division champ, you know, former, undisputed, you know. They need each other. You know, if they want to be to that next level of greatness, they need this. Bud needs it because he would be a two-division undisputed champ. Four belts. The four-belt era. There's nobody else that got that. As, as right now. And then Spence, he'll be undisputed at welterweight the first time in a long, long time. In the four-division era. Era, I think he'll be the first. 
unified or I'm sorry, undisputed. All right. Um, if you were to win. So historically, Salah into this fight. All right. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to clear up a few things. You guys can let me know how you feel about that in the uh, comments. You know, um, this common stuff that I hear don't really make too much sense to me. You know, I think all of these things are a factor in the fights and stuff. I'm not saying it's not. But you also got to look at the bigger picture of it all, you know. Um, I think it's going to be a good fight. I think the styles really match up well, you know. I think the styles really match up well. When people are asking about whether this is going to be a court better than Pacquiao and Mayweather, of course it will be. Um, of course it will be. You know, I think... Uh, you know, Bud is 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 probably gonna bring the approach of being the boxer and, and and the mover and the counterer and stuff like that. But he has dog in him, so there's gonna be periods where he's gonna bang. He's not gonna be running around. You know, um, I've never really seen a boring fight from them. Neither one of them. You know what I mean? I think the only boring Bud fight was the poster one. Because he kind of like, he he played it extremely smart. Extremely smart, you know. Uh, I think that was probably the only fight where I felt like, uh, it was kind of boring. Because Postal didn't really want to engage. And Bud was just beating him from the outside and didn't really engage until he had him hurt. But outside of that, I've these guys are not boring. And I think it matches up well, and I think it would be a great, and I think it's going to be some drama. I'll get to that in the uh, breakdown, the actual breakdown. But I think there's going to be some drama early in the fight. Now, I'm going to tell you when I get to that to that video. All right, but anyway, that is um, our video for today, man. Please subscribe to the channel, um, and um, smash the like button if you like the content, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.